Hi, I'm Dr. Messina. Recently, a newer laser system has hit the market for tattoo removal called the picosecond lasers. Picosecond lasers fire faster than the traditional Q-switch lasers, but it's led to a lot of confusion and a lot of misconceptions. So, I want to discuss the differences between the traditional Q-switch laser and the picosecond laser. Q-switch lasers have been used since 1962 to remove tattoos, and they have a very specific quality that we need to have a safe laser tattoo removal. We need a laser that fires very rapidly as to not transfer too much heat to the tissue and to the tattoo ink itself. So a laser used for hair removal, which fires in milliseconds, would definitely not be acceptable for laser tattoo removal. The traditional Q-switch laser fires in nanoseconds, that is one billionth of a second. The picosecond lasers fire in picoseconds, which is one trillionth of a second. So they both have the quality that we want, the rapid firing and the lower level of heat transfer. That brings us to our first misconception. Q-switch lasers are photoacoustic, just as picosecond lasers are. Photoacoustic means that the laser light, the photopod, goes down, it hits the tattoo ink, and there's a snap, an audible snap. That's the acoustic part that's actually shattering the ink. A lot of patients are told that Q-switch lasers are photothermal, and they are not. They are photoacoustic, just as the picosecond lasers are. So what is all the hoopla about? When you have a tattoo, it's in your dermis, and macrophages are looking at it. Some macrophages have ink, some of your cells have ink in them, but they're observing this tattoo. They can't really take it away because the volume of ink is much too great. So we shatter that ink with these lasers. A Q-switch later, shatters it like a sledgehammer would shatter a boulder. A picosecond laser shatters it much more like a fine chisel, making a finer dust of your ink particles. The theory was that the finer dust would be easier for your immune cells to carry away, thus decreasing the number of treatments required to remove a tattoo. That brings us to myth two. The picosecond lasers do not decrease the number of treatments. You're still, unfortunately, going to require about 10 sessions on the average to get a tattoo removed. My theory is, yes, the picosecond is making a, more of a fine dust, Yes, it's probably easier for the immune cell to carry that dust away. What hasn't changed is the immune cells are still working at their own rate. So that's really a rate limiting step. So I think if there was a system that actually could speed up our own immune process, that might decrease it. But for now, it's still about the same number of treatments. Now, which is better? I have to explain how laser tattoo removal works in the first place. It's very important to pair off the wavelength coming from the laser to the wavelength that the ink is absorbing. Black ink absorbs all wavelengths, therefore black ink is relatively easy compared to the others to come off. Red absorbs a 532 nanometer wavelength called a KTP. It's the only wavelength that'll work on red. Green ink absorbs the 755 wavelength, an alexandrite wavelength. It will also absorb, to a slightly lesser degree, the ruby 695 wavelength. Doesn't absorb the YAG, which is a very, very common laser. It doesn't absorb that that well. So green ink would be very difficult to get out, as would light blue, if all you had was a YAG laser. 
and then blue and light blue, like the 695, the ruby lasers. Now I have four or five actual separate lasers because I prefer having that each one for a tattoo, uh, for multicolored tattoos. However, when we're dealing with Q-switch lasers, the majority of them were Jag lasers, 1064 wavelength. That handled the black, it handled the dark blue, and if they were able to frequency double it and make it 532, it would do red as well. The Pico second brand doesn't seem to be as uniform, so you can't compare one brand of Pico to another because they all have different wavelengths. Some are Yegs, some are uh, Yeg and Ruby, some are Alexandrite, which would mean they're each going to target one color better than the rest. But nobody is really able to do every color. And currently, no lasers are able to do yellow very well, and certainly white, because white doesn't absorb anything. The third myth is going to be safety. Patients come to me all the time and say, isn't it true that a Q-switch laser could burn and scar you much worse than a picosecond laser? That's often operator dependent. The Q-switch lasers have a history of safety. They've been around since the early 60s and they are in general very safe unless used improperly. Picosecond laser is not new either. The, what is new about a picosecond laser, it's the first time that it's been put into a box that's actually the proper size to fit in your average medical office. That's what's unique about them. But same type properties, they're firing very fast. When done inappropriately, you can indeed get a burn and a scar and hypopigmentation. People have asked me, do you think that the picosecond laser is going to make the Q-switch obsolete? And it's not. You're always going to need the Q-switch. In fact, it's recommended that you start your laser tattoo removal process with the Q-switch for the first several treatments. And then when the tattoo is lightened up, if you want, to bring in a picosecond laser. I personally don't do that. I stay Q-switched throughout the process. So, what would I recommend? I think the most important thing for you to do is to choose a provider who has been doing the laser tattoo removal for quite a while, who understands the physics behind it, who understands the safety profile of the equipment, and that'll give you your best result and your best outcome, whether it's with picosecond or Q-switch lasers. I hope this cleared up some misconceptions or any questions that you might have had. Good luck. Take care.